Hi guys, it's Nathan from Howling Success Dog Training and Behaviour. I'm here today with Obi, one of the dogs from Monica's Doggy Rescue. He is a Roddy Kelpie Cross. He can be quite scared of new strangers, can't you? A little shake off. Um, and he can be a little bit scared of cars, trucks, and reactive to other dogs. Um, so what I'm going to talk to you guys today is about loose leash walking. Um, so, I'm going to rattle this off rather fast, but let your dog sniff. Um, loose leash walking is not a competitive heel. Your dog does not have to stand by your side the entire time. You should be allowing your dog to enrich their life by smelling as much as they can possibly take in. Because that is how your dog sees the world. That's how they, that's literally their strongest sense, is their sense of smell. A really interesting fact is when your dog sniffs the ground, you've got to think of it this way. They're not just smelling what's there now, they're smelling what's been there the last 24 hours because their olfactory system is crazy strong. So they're smelling the past. They're smelling things that have passed by. They're smelling dogs. They're smelling what that dog's eaten, if they've done a poop. Um, they're just taking in so much information that way. So if you're out there and you're trying to exhaust your dog for the day by going for a long run and they're trying to sniff, but you're dragging them around, stop, let them sniff. They'll be much more tired if they're mentally exhausted. Let your dog drain themselves mentally. Let them sniff all they can so when they get home, all they can think to do is sleep because their brain is just overworked. So that's a big one. Let your dog sniff. Let them stop and smell the roses. Uh, part two is we don't need to be tugging on the lead every time our dog is pulling. So if I'm walking with little Obi here, and the lead gets tense. We've done a little bit on this walk already. I've already recorded the video for this video with him, but if the lead gets tense, come on, let's go. Oh, he's being too good, yes. Um, okay, so if the lead gets tense, all you need to do is, I like to hold the lead, stop, and just brace myself. Because by bracing yourself, they're not going anywhere, you're not going anywhere, you call them back to you and you reinforce them once they're back and then you start walking and you're reinforcing them as long as the lead has that look, that nice little smiley face because that's how our walk should be. We, should, we shouldn't be dragging them around. Oh, here we go, a little bit of leash tension. So I would stop and I'd say, Obi. So your dog should have a pretty firm a uh, bit of name recognition. Good boy. But tension on the leash means we're going to stop and we're not going to go anywhere. Now, if you have a dog that when you go to walk again, bolts to the end of that lead and they're doing this consistently and you're just basically not even taking a step and you're stopping, what you're going to want to do, sorry, Aussie salute. To all my Australians out there, drop a like if you've been dropping the Aussie salute and summer's not even here yet. Um, but if there's tension on the lead, you're going to stop. If they're constantly jumping to the end of that leash and they're bugging you with it, what I like to practice is some U-turns. So they run to the end of the lead. I'm going to stop. I'm going to turn my body around. I'm going to call them. And I'm going to start walking that other direction. And what this is going to get the dog doing is frustrating the hell out of them like they have been you because now they're gonna to have to stick by your side and they're like, no, I wanted to go that way. Why can't I go that way? Um, the occasional dog is gonna turn and just bolt the other way. You're just gonna keep turning around. Um, this frustration is going to cause them to ask why. They're gonna be like, why is this not working? Why can I not just pull to everything that I'm used to pulling towards? Um, so that's only for our dogs that are just gonna constantly hit the end of the lead. Now, if your dog walks nicely after you've been reinforcing them, start to stagger that reinforcer more and more because you don't want to obviously be feeding your dog for every step forever so start to stagger it treat here treat there begin with every step maybe after a few days you're going to be doing every 10 steps but maybe by the end of the week you're going to be doing by the end of the block and you're just going to keep staggering where your treats are um and Pairing that up with stopping whenever there is that tension on the leash. Now, if your dog doesn't know their name too well, um, you should teach them a little bit of uh, name recognition, but they're gonna need to know their name for this. 
Um, that way, when you're walking with them, if they do start to drag ahead and you can see it, you can preempt and you can ask them to stop. You can say, hey, Obi. <laughs> yes. And they're gonna stop. They're gonna give you their attention and you can reinforce them for that attention. And then you can start reinforcing them for sticking nice and close again. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Following up is a little demo of how to do this. Thank you. Say bye, Elby. Say bye. He's a good boy. So welcome Obi from Monica's. Obi, see it? Obi's a ruddy Kelpie cross. Can be reactive to cars, strangers, dogs. He's a very sweet boy once you earn his trust. Very sweet boy. So we're gonna demonstrate some loose leash walking. Hey Obi. So I haven't done any of this with Obi yet. So he does like to pull. So remember that rule. Tension on the leash means we stop. Obi, come here. We've done a lot of work, so Obi is quite responsive to his name. Yes. And while Obi is by my side here, yes. Obi. Yes. And Obi loves his food. Obi. Yes. Now if you have a dog that runs to the end of the lead every time you go to take a step, turn around. They're going to see. Call them. As soon as they're in that nice spot where there's no tension, reinforcing. Yes. Yes. See how quickly Obi's picked up the fact that no tension on the leash, walking alongside, yes, is getting him all the treats, access to everything he could ever want. Can even do a turn here. Yes. Now, ideally, we're gonna start increasing the distance between our treats. So I'm gonna go for about 10 steps now. Obi. Yes. But a really important thing that people seem to forget is, Obi. Caught him before he had a chance to practice the behavior. Obi. Yes, good boy. Oh, you are a good boy, aren't you, Obi? It's a bit of a wet day, isn't it, bub? Shall we continue? Now, one thing that I was saying people seem to forget is walks are for your dog. Who are you going on these walks for? Why are you stopping your dog from sniffing? We go on these walks for our dogs to have access to the world through their nose because that's how they see the world. Let your dog sniff. Let them pee on things. Let them check things out. So he's pulling again. Come. Gonna reset. Start walking. Yes. So notice I'm using my marker word to keep Obi engaged with me. Obi, come here. But see, I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna let Obi sniff whatever it is he's smelling. Because that is how they see the world. Do not deprive your dog. If you're going on a walk and you're just trying to exercise your dog, and you're trying to burn out their energy so they're gonna be tired throughout the day, and you're not letting them sniff because you're just trying to go and go and go, you're doing them a disservice. Let your dog sniff. Let them smell everything. That's how they're gonna be exhausted. You're gonna exhaust their brain. See that tension coming back? Obi, come. Here comes a calf. Great time to end it. Obi, say thank you. 